Okay, so now on to the Hugo mini course. So this is the basic outline of the things that we've covered. So we've had, let's see, what is that? Six of these so far. And we're now on to, I, I think I lied last time. I think I said that the components was going to be the last course that we did in here. And I decided to extend this a little bit. So uh, this very likely will be the last course in this Hugo mini course, but I've, uh, I've said that in the past, so who knows? Um, but this course, basically for tonight, we're just going to talk about deploying the site that we've created. So we have a basic website. It doesn't look like very much, but it's only available on our local computer right now. So we want to get this up into the internet so other people can view this. So let's take a look at how to do that. I'll flip over here to my terminal. And can folks see my terminal right now? Okay, awesome. So this is our website right now. So this is the structure for our site. And if we wanted to see what this actually looked like, we could run the Hugo server. This is a lightweight web server that's built into Hugo. And then I could open this in our browser, this local host 1313. And this is our website. So hopefully this, the screen share flipped over to my Chrome browser and you can see my website right now. Uh, it's kind of an ugly looking website. We have some pink and some blue that contrasts weird with this, this light green color. Uh, but this is basically where we're at. We have a couple internal pages here. So we have an about, a contact without any Thing really on there and then we have some posts that look like kind of like a broken template but we just wanted to demonstrate different templates so this is our website and what we're going to do here is we're actually going to deploy this onto gitlab so gitlab is a git repository service but they have a service called gitlab pages which allows you to host static websites on it so we're going to create a repository and we're going to push our code up to there and then we're going to go through a process of running a ci or a continuous integration build to actually build the static assets of the website. And then we're going to deploy that to the GitHub pages and we're going to make sure that our domain points to it and then we can view it afterwards. So let's take a look at going through that whole process. So I'm over here, I'm on GitLab. You can create a free account for GitLab. And if you're not familiar with the service, it's very similar to GitHub, but the whole platform is actually open sourced. And they have a hosted version here that is uh, free to use and actually has unlimited private repositories and teams and all sorts of things in there. So it's a, it's a really cool service if you haven't taken a look at it in the past. But we have a group here called the Jamstack Boston Group. And in this, I can create a new project. So I press the new project, and then we'll call this jamstackboston.com. That's our website. And I'm going to leave this as a private group for now, but you can make this a public group as well. We'll probably convert this eventually, but just for this purpose, I'll leave it private. And now we've created this repository. Now, the fact that this is private doesn't mean that we won't be able to have a public facing website. The, basically the, the privacy here is saying that we have a, a private um, repository so people can't see the code that's behind uh, our website. Okay, so we've created this repository. And the first thing I wanna do is actually wanna point our domain over to this repository because domain propagation sometimes takes a little bit of time and I'm hoping that it will finish by the time we finish you know, the other preparation we have to do for deploying this. So on the project page, if you come over here to your settings and you go to pages, you have this interface here and you can see that we can add a new domain here. So by default, if we actually add our project code here, they'll give us a default domain uh, that we could just use. It would be something like jamstackboston.gitlab.io. But if you want to use your custom domain, which we have jamstackboston.com purchased, we can add it this way. So we'll come up here to the upper right click on new domain and we'll add jamstackboston.com here. And now we have an option here. So this is to uh, create a certificate here and it's using a service called Let's Encrypt. And so this is essentially what's gonna give you TLS slash SSL, um, which is gonna make your browser uh, go over HTTPS, which is a secure connection. And this will happen automatically using Let's Encrypt if we have this checked. If you add your own certificate, you actually could uncheck this and you could add your own certificate here if you want to use a different service. But the easiest way to get up and going is to leave this checked here. So we'll say create new domain. And then you see we have some options here. So this is asking uh, for some verification of this domain just so we're not you know, trying to make a website on a domain that we don't own. So um, one thing you, they, they mentioned you can do here is you can create a C name for this to point it over at jamstack.gitlab.io. Now this is a good idea to, to use something like this because 
Sometimes GitLab will change, not very often, but I've seen it happen before. They'll change their underlying IP address that they use for the GitLab pages. Now, I've actually gone through ahead here and I've already pointed an A record over for, uh, this is the jamstackboston.com domain here. And I have this hosted on, uh, or I have the sewer register called domains.google.com. And I've already pointed this over to the IP address for the GitLab pages here. So that's what we're using. And if you want to see that in the documentation, you can come over here to the GitLab docs. If you go to the GitLab pages section, this is the URL right here. Uh, they, they have some information about their domain that they're using for their GitLab pages. So you can point your A record there like that as well. So that's what we're going to do for this uh, case. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to verify our domain. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab this information. I'm going to make a TXT record. So I'm going to grab this underscore GitLab pages section here. I'll come over here and you don't have to use a Google domain for this. You could use any provider that you want to use. Um, but I'm going to change this to a TXT record. Let me hide this so I can see this. So I'm going to make a text record. I'm going to paste this first value in the front here. And then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to grab this second value. So this record is a text record. I don't need that piece of information. I'm going to come over here and copy the second part. Go back to Google Domains, put that in the text section here, and I'm going to add. Okay, so we've added that text record here. This might take a couple minutes for it to actually come through. So um, basically, we'll, we'll give it a, a few minutes, but what you're going to want to do eventually is you're going to come in here and you're going to try re-verification. So you're going to hit this little refresh button. I can hit it right now. It's not going to do any harm to hit it, but it probably won't be ready yet. Okay, so the domain didn't verify, so that failed. Uh, but essentially, we're going to give this a couple seconds to go out and propagate, and then we're going to verify it using this setting. And this will turn into a green box after that. Okay, so that's some of the prep that we've done. We're going to give it a minute for that to, to, to complete. But the next step we have to do is we have to go back to our repository and set up a little bit of information in there in order to run this. So let's come in here. And what we're going to do in our file structure here is we're going to add a new file. So I'm going to add a child node. It's going to be called .gitlab .yml. And if you want to see your hidden files in this browser, I got to do that. Shift I if you use NerdTree. Okay, so this is the GitLab CI YAML file. Now what this is, is it's essentially instructions to our continuous integration. That's what CI stands for. Uh, to, to tell how to build our website and how to deploy it. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to first specify an image to use. And I always forget the name of this. So I don't think Hugo has an official Hugo image yet. So there's a lot of images when you look up the documentation. In this case, we're going to grab this image here. So this is one of the Hugo images. This will come with Hugo pre-installed on it. Actually, we can grab this whole, this whole block here to save some time typing. And so I'll paste this in here. And what this is doing is it's saying, okay, so this is a, a Docker image that has Hugo installed. So what we're saying to do is when we push our code up to our repository, we want to make sure that we run CI. And it's going to know to run CI because we have this special name file in here. So you have to name your file .gitlab CI YAML. That's going to go and it's going to, it's going to reach out to a runner. It's going to grab this as our base image, which has Hugo on it. And then we specify a job here. And our job here is pages. And this is a, a special name you have to use in order to deploy to, to GitLab pages. And that is telling you that, okay, we want to run that job, which is going to do some setup to deploy this to the GitLab pages um, hosting. And then we specify a script. And what our script is doing here is it's just running the command Hugo. And we have the binary because the image comes with the Hugo binary already added to it. And let me just show you what happens when I run Hugo locally. So if you see a git status here, um, we essentially have just the, the CI that we added, that file there is, is not tracked. But if I run Hugo here, and I run git status again, you'll see we now have this public directory here. So this is the build assets for our site. I'm going to remove that because that's not something I want to track. Uh, we don't need to track that. But that's basically the compiled HTML and CSS for the site. Let me, let me actually show you what's inside this real quick. I'll list the files in there. So you have like the static uh, index files and all the uh, uh, like about files in here as well. So if you look in the about folder, there'd be another index.html file. Okay, let's remove that asset so it's not tracked by Git. But essentially what we're saying is run Hugo so it creates that public directory. 
And then we say, we have an artifact now at that public directory. And that artifact is what we're actually going to deploy to the uh, GitLab pages hosting. And then we only want this to run when we do something on the master branch, whether we push code up there or we merge something into the master branch. And what that does is it allows us to, you know, fork or, or branch off and do some features and develop new things or fix bugs without pushing anything to our live site. Okay, so that's essentially our GitLab CI instructions. Let's add that to our repository. I'm going to git add that and I'll say commit add CI. And now what we need to do, so let's come back here. Let's try to verify our text record here. So this is what we were waiting on before. Okay, our text record has been verified. So we show that we have ownership of our domain. We're using Let's Encrypt. So we'll be able to get this over HTTPS, which is a secure connection. That's great. Let's save our changes. And let's just make sure one last thing in our domains is set up. So we want to force HTTPS. And what that does is if we don't force that, we could have two types of traffic. We could have to regular HTTP and traffic going to HTTPS. We only want it to go to the secure connection. So if someone were to go directly to the unsecure uh, connection, we'll push them over to the secure connection automatically. And then when our site is ready, we can go and we can access it over here. But let's go back to our repository. I'm going to go back to the home screen of our, our repository here. I'm going to click on that little house. And let's first push our code. So these are just instructions because this is an empty repository at the moment. And it gives you some instructions about creating code. Since we already have created our project, we can just come down here and add the remote. So the remote just points to this repository on GitLab. We have a, a local repository, but we want to point this to the remote repository. So I'm going to add this. And I'm just going to change the name of our remote because I already have an, an origin that points to GitHub currently. So I'm just going to change this to GL for GitLab, but you can name this whatever you want. So I'm going to remote add GL in a path to our repository. Now that we have that remote, we can come back here and, and follow the rest of this, these instructions. We can push up our code. So I'm going to push upstream. So that will allow me to just do a regular push in the future without having to specify my master branch. So I'm going to push origin all. And then a couple things are going to happen here. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to reload my page. Oh, looks like that didn't push. Oh, I know why. I said origin. Okay, so I renamed this to, to GL, not origin. We want to push this up to that. So GL is our, our remote. Push that up. It created all the, the test branches that I've created. It also pushed our master. That's the one that we're really concerned with. I'm going to reload our repository. The instructions should go away and we should see our repository. So we do. These are the files that are in our repository by default here. And okay, so let's see here. Um, if I reload this, let me just make another random change in here and save that and see if this runs. I was expecting CI to run automatically after that. I might have to make a PR for this. Let's just, uh, let's take a look in here and see if we can get this to, to run. So let's go to our layouts, defaults. We'll go to list and then I'll just add a div that says hi. I'm going to save that and I'll commit that. And let's just push this again. Okay, so I push that. We have the GitLab, GitLab CI should be registered. Okay, so now that we, so this is registered here. Now let's push, when I push to master, you see that we'll start getting this pipeline running here. So you get this little option that says it's running. I can click in this to see the status of this. And this is going to be running the, the CI script that we basically put into our repository. So you see this is running. If I click into this again, you can see that the pages job is running here. So you just have to give this a couple minutes for it to complete. And once that completes, we should be able to go back to our pages settings here. So let me open that in a new tab. And okay, so here is our, our default uh, page URL now that we have the repository there. So we wouldn't have had to do anything really to set that up with our DNS records. But if we want to see our, our um, domain that we set up, we could use this link here. So let's just wait for this to complete. Okay, so it says it, it completed, it says it deployed. So let's click on this URL and see if our site is here. 
So the, the Let's Encrypt uh, has not propagated yet. Let's just try to go to the, the blank site here. Let me see if I can go to my advanced. Proceed. Okay, so our site's coming through here. We're missing um, certain things like, so this should, based on our local copy, should have a background color. So some of the CSS styling is probably not coming through yet because of some mismatches between the domains. Some stuff maybe uh, is going over secure connection, some maybe is not. Um, but essentially this is coming through here. But one thing you're gonna notice, and this is a common gotcha for a lot of people, is if you click on any of these links, it's gonna break, right? Because this is our Jamstack Boston URL. But if I hover over this, you see that it's going to example.org blog post, uh, post one. So let me see if I click that. And this is the example domain. So this is not something that we own and that's not correct. And the reason that's happening here is, let me, uh, let me demonstrate two things at one time. So let me get, check out a new branch. I'm gonna call this test. Actually, a better name would be domain fix. So I create a new branch called domain fix. And if I come over here to our site-wide settings, so that's your config.yaml file, you'll see that we have a base URL here of example.org. So when we deploy this, it's gonna be trying to send all our URLs if we have relative URLs off that base URL. So let's come in here and let's change that. So I'm gonna make this an HTTPS and I'm gonna say jamstackboston.com. I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna commit this. I'm gonna get add. I'm gonna say, whoops, a message. We fixed our domain. And then I'm gonna get push and that should push up all our branches because we said all before, I believe it will. Let's check. Um, and if I come over here, an interesting thing will happen. So first of all, you'll, if you go to your homepage, you'll see uh, your, your base of your repository, you'll see that there's no new pipeline running here. It just has our, our last pipeline that passed. That's because we did this off a new branch and we're only looking at the, uh, the master branch for our GitLab CI. We specified that here, only run on master. So if we want that to run, we could come up and we could create a merge request. This is essentially a pull request if you're familiar with GitHub, it's just a different name. So we'll create a new merge request and we'll make a merge request from, I'm not sure our branch came through. What did I, what did I name my branch? Domain fix? Nope, okay, so let me push that specifically git push gl domain fix. I'm gonna specify that branch. Okay, so that should push it up. Again, let me prove to you that CI is not running. Hopefully I'm right. Okay, CI is not running. That's great. Let's come in here and let's create a merge request. So if I look for domain fix, that's our branch. So I'm gonna merge domain fix into the master branch. I'm gonna compare the branches. You see all our changes here. It's just the one commit that we have. I'm going to submit the merge request. And I'm going to merge it. Now, you could make your CI uh, file here a lot more robust. You could actually have a testing step that says test on merge requests and things like that. We don't have that step right now, but you could add more to it. I just wanted to show the most simple example I could think of. Let's go back to our home here. And let's see, now our CI pipeline's running because we merged that branch into our master branch. I'm gonna click that. And we can just watch this and, and wait for this to finish. Jeez. Okay, that looks like it finished. Am I not on? Oh, and then I'll reload this page. I think you're muted right now. And can, pe can people hear me right now? No, you're muted. Oh, I can hear you. Okay, um... Can everyone hear me now? No. Nope. 
Can people hear me now? No, you're muted. Oh. Hello? Oh, there you go. You can hear me now? Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Could, could anyone hear me the whole time? No, it was just very recently. Oh, okay. Good. I was like, oh man, am I just talking to myself? Okay. Um, I'm glad you can hear me now. Uh, okay. Uh, so I've been muted by Anthony. Um, hey, Anthony, it looks like you muted me accidentally, maybe. Um, okay. Can you hear me again? Okay. Um, Stephanie, let me know if people can hear me. All right. Um, so hopefully we're following along. We, we merged that branch in. It ran our pipeline again when it hit master. And then it's passed. So when we re reloaded the page, we're now getting the styles coming through here. And we should be able to click to our internal pages here, and those should work now. Um, eventually, this will get pushed over to a secure connection. It just takes a little bit of time, and I don't think in the interest of, of taking Gleb's time for uh, speaking, I, I don't want to wait for that to happen. But that's essentially how you could deploy uh, a Hugo site to a free hosting that's integrated with your repository that you're already managing your code and maybe tracking issues and doing testing and things with. And... Um, Hopefully the process wasn't wasn't too complicated, but if anyone has questions, I'll field maybe one or one or two quick questions if there are any. Um, I'm not sure if any, no one looks like uh, we're not using the slide do for for my presentation. That's fine, but let me know if anyone has a question, and then we'll move on. So when you say page loads, are you talking about um, people visiting your website or are you talking about the CI running? Yeah, I think they do limit you at some point. Um, I, I, I don't know the details on that. I probably should have looked that up ahead of time. But I assume, I think they'll let you get away with a fair amount. But if you're getting like a million hits, you know, they're, they're going to they're gonna say something, I think. And you're, you're better, at that point, if you're getting really high traffic, you're better suited going with something like Netlify or, or something that's distributed. Uh, they might have, actually, GitLab pages might have a CDN on the back end as well. I'm not really sure how, how it's all set up, but you might want a more robust host with more features at that point anyways. Um, but I think you can get away. I've, I've hosted a lot of sites on this, and for, for regular like little sites that I host, which don't get any traffic, I guess, they, they, I've never had any problems with that. Um, I do know that they limit you on, if you're building your site constantly, so if you're making lots of lots of changes, and you're running that CI process and it's running the GitLab uh, pages runner a lot, they will limit you eventually on that, although I've never come anywhere close to hitting the limits on that. You'd have to be probably running some automated processes or have a, a decent sized team to hit the limits, unless they've changed things since since I used to do a lot more work on it. Sure. Anyone else? Okay. Cool, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen if I can figure out how to do that on this.